Dead America Gun Runners Part 5 By Derek Slayton Chapter 1 Day Zero Plus 52 The moon hung high in the sky, its silvery glow casting an eerie ambience over the battlefield at the bridge. Amidst the desolation, the remnants of a pickup truck lay smoldering in the middle of the road, while the hills beyond teemed with covert movement. Sergeant Alvarez stood by the front truck, his chest tight with the weight of the day's strain. His gaze swept over his squad, each member frantically preparing for their perilous gambit. Private Acosta toiled at the rear of the other truck, rigging it with their last remaining hand grenade. Nearby, Leonard lay prone beneath the vehicle, keeping vigilant watch over the enemy across the river. Alvarez's attention turned to his wild card, Cillian. Despite his unease at involving a civilian in such danger, Cillian had proven his mettle on the battlefield time and again in recent days. The sergeant couldn't help but feel a measure of confidence in his abilities. Do you know what you're going to do, Cillian? Alvarez inquired, his voice laden with concern. Yeah, I think so, Cillian replied, a hint of uncertainty tainting his tone. In my head, I'm going to get across the river and figure out a way to pull those things away from the gas station. Then you're going to get the hell out of there, Alvarez emphasized, his eyes probing Cillian's troubled expression. But Cillian hesitated, a troubled look crossing his face. Sensing his apprehension, Alvarez pressed him further. You're going to get the hell out of there, right? The plan is solid, as long as they take the bait and follow the truck into town, Cillian acknowledged. But if they're in pursuit of your truck, there's a good chance they won't see the decoy at the gas station. Cillian, it'll be okay, Alvarez replied. I don't think it will, Cillian responded forcefully. I had to get up to an elevated position in order to spot the station. I didn't go further up the highway, but I don't know if it's even visible from there. Alvarez paced anxiously, knowing all too well what Cillian was about to suggest. Someone needs to take shots at their convoy to divert their attention toward town. Cillian proposed, his gaze steady. Then Leonard and Robertson can handle it. Alvarez countered, unwilling to endanger Cillian any further. But Cillian shook his head resolutely, meeting Alvarez's gaze with unwavering determination. Those two need to be in their ambush positions near the truck. The longer they can hold them there, the more time it gives you in Acosta to get up the highway. As Alvarez mulled over the proposition, Leonard's voice echoed from beneath the truck. The kid's right, Sarge. It doesn't do us much good to have a decoy if they don't know we're doing it. Reluctantly, Alvarez acquiesced, acknowledging the grim reality of their situation. I don't like it, Leonard. None of us do, Sarge, Leonard conceded. But it's the hand we've been dealt. If you want to fold, then we can blow both these loads right now and try our chances out in the wilderness together. But if you want to have a shot at delivering the shipment, then this is what needs to be done. With a heavy heart, Alvarez finally accepted their course of action. I'll be fine, Sergeant, Cillian reassured him. I'm not going to get involved in a firefight. I'm going to hit them and escape before they can get close to me. Alvarez nodded, a sigh escaping him as he resigned himself to their plan. So, what's your plan? He inquired. There's a five or six story building just on the other side of the river. It's a few blocks away from the gas station, but that should be close enough. I'll get across the bridge, set the alarms, then get up to the roof of that building. When they start their pursuit of you, I'll have a clean shot towards them. Celine responded. That's a couple hundred yards away at least. Are you a good enough shot to hit them? Alvarez questioned, his concern evident. Cillian retrieved a handgun from his bag, holding it up with determined resolve. I can aim in their direction and pull the trigger as fast as I can. Hopefully, one will find the target. Unconvinced, Alvarez retrieved an assault rifle from the back of the truck, offering it to Cillian. You'll have better luck with this, he advised, guiding Cillian through its operation with paternal patience. This thing is going to kick like a mule, so be ready for it. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to get more of your shots where they need to be. Cillian nodded, absorbing Alvarez's instructions. With the distance I need to cover, where should I aim? He inquired. Alvarez smiled faintly, imparting his wisdom like a seasoned mentor. The goal isn't to hit the driver, which is something I would have difficulty with at that distance. You just need to let them know you're there. So when you look through the scope, Aim just in front of the lead truck and squeeze the trigger as fast as you can. If there's a line of trucks, don't adjust your aim once you start firing. All it's going to take is one bullet impact to get them to look over to you. 
then the muzzle flash will stand out. I can handle that, Cillian added. Now, I want you to listen to me. As soon as you see their brake lights, you get the hell out of there. Get back across the river, however you can, get to your bike and catch up to us if you can. Alvarez said, And if I can't, Cillian pressed. Alvarez paused, contemplating his response with measured consideration. Find a way to head west. He finally instructed, his voice weighted with the gravity of their predicament. We're behind enemy lines here, so we have to assume that there's more resistance between here and Spokane, and they're going to be on high alert. If you can get to the west, even if you run into another one of their groups, you can hopefully pass yourself off as just another survivor. He elaborated, his tone somber yet resolute. So you want me to hang out with these assholes? Cillian interjected, his incredulity palpable. Yeah, I do. Alvarez affirmed, his gaze steady. I know it's not ideal, but it's a lot better than being hunted by these guys. Cillian mulled over the proposition before nodding in agreement. I'm going to try like hell to get up to you, though, so don't leave me too far in the dust. Alvarez chuckled warmly as he clapped Cillian on the back, a silent acknowledgement passing between them. Moments later, Private Acosta emerged from the truck, signaling their readiness. We're good to go here, Sarge, she reported, her tone brisk. Alvarez turned to her. Any chance they can disarm it? Acosta shook her head, a sly smile playing at her lips. The tripwire is hooked to the locking mechanism. As soon as it's half an inch off the frame, the pin is pulled. I put the grenade in the middle of the truck, so even if they hear it drop, they won't have the time to do anything about it. My only regret is that we won't be able to see the expression on their faces, Alvarez lamented wryly. Cillian prepared to depart, prompting Alvarez to inquire about his timeline. How much time do you need to get set up? Cillian deliberated briefly before responding. Can you give me 20 minutes? It's cutting it close, but we'll do our best, Alvarez conceded. As he began to leave, Alvarez extended his hand, a silent farewell passing between them. Though no words were spoken, the gravity of their parting hung heavy in the air. Cillian gave a solemn nod, acknowledging the weight of the moment. You be safe out there, Cillian, Alvarez intoned, his voice heavy with unspoken concern. Always, Cillian replied. Cillian slung the assault rifle over his shoulder before sharing a nod of acknowledgement to his fellow soldiers. He mounted his bike and revved the engine, the rumble of the motor echoing through the stillness of the night. As he rode towards the town of Clarkson, Cillian savored the fleeting moments of peace, knowing that they would soon be eclipsed by the chaos of their mission. Each passing minute brought him closer to the bridge, the anticipation building with every mile traveled. Upon reaching the outskirts of the bridge, Cillian slowed his bike to a stop his gaze fixed on the structure looming ahead. Pulling out his binoculars, he surveyed the scene, noting the subtle movements on the bridge and the absence of any viable alternative routes across the water. Looks like I'm gonna have to make a run for it, he muttered to himself. With a deep breath, Cillian throttled forward, his heart pounding in his chest as he crossed the threshold of the bridge. Spotting a wrecked car off to the side, he veered towards it, skillfully maneuvering his bike into hiding. As he walked towards the bridge, he grabbed two cell phones from his bag, powering them on and inspecting the alarm settings. They'll be here in 20 minutes, so set these for 15. That should give those things enough time to wander away, he thought aloud to himself. Another moment passed before he got a sly smile on his face. He dug through his bag, pulling out an old wind-up alarm clock and working the alarm settings. Maybe 40 minutes. Nah, 45. Let those assholes feel like they're alone at the station before letting the neighbors know that they have company. Cillian set off towards the bridge on foot, keeping to the shadows as he approached the daunting scene before him. Surveying the landscape, he noted the scattered wreckage and the handful of zombies lurking nearby, their senses oblivious to his presence. Okay, get across the bridge, hang a right to the gas station. Stash the alarm by the pumps, then run over three blocks while dropping the cells along the way. Get into that mid-rise building, fight my way to the roof, and prepare to piss off a heavily armed militia group. Glancing down at his watch, Cillian grimaced at the tight timeline before him, and do it all in roughly 15 minutes. Yeah, this is gonna go well. As he looked up at the moon, noticing that there isn't a single cloud near it, its brightness illuminating everything within view. An assist would have been nice, he murmured, 
his grip tightening on his knife as he prepared to make his way across. Let's do it. Chapter 2 Cillian stood at the precipice of the bridge, his gaze fixed on the distant town obscured by a hazy veil of uncertainty. A formidable horde of the undead, numbering a couple dozen, littered the path ahead. Time hung heavy in the air, urging him forward, compelling him to action. Cillian propelled himself into motion. The initial stretch of the bridge lay devoid of lifeless forms, yet ahead loomed a trio of zombies, their vacant eyes alighting upon the young man's approach, spurred by the sound of his footfalls. Rather than confront them head-on, Cillian veered sharply to the right, his pace accelerating as he swiftly bypassed the looming threats. Unconcerned with the racket his movements might provoke, he surged onward toward the next cluster of adversaries. A handful of ghouls lurched towards him, their decaying arms grasping the air. Forced to swerve left, Cillian sought refuge behind the wreckage of a car, its mangled frame bearing witness to a violent collision with the bridge's concrete barrier. As the creatures closed in, encircling the vehicle, Cillian surveyed his surroundings with a calculating gaze. Anticipating their movements, he vaulted over the car's hood, the creatures stumbling in pursuit, their relentless advance impeded by the obstruction. Cillian pressed on, his destination, the end of the bridge beckoning from a mere forty yards away. Yet, a daunting obstacle stood in his path. A dozen undead, their twisted forms barring his passage. Summoning every ounce of resolve, Cillian surged forward, his sights set on two outliers to the right. With a determined thrust, he aimed to plow through their ranks, his shoulder colliding with their grotesque forms in a desperate bid for progress. In a flurry of motion, one fell to the ground, while the other seized hold of his bag, wrenching him off balance and sending him sprawling to the ground. Pain flared as the assault rifle's edges dug into his flesh eliciting a sharp cry from Cillian's lips. The creature moaned with excitement, seeing its prey laying on his back on the ground. As it began its rapid descent towards its fresh meal, Cillian drove his knife upward. The blade found its mark with lethal precision, extinguishing the creature's undead existence in a single, decisive strike. But victory proved fleeting as the lifeless husk collapsed upon him, pinning him to the unforgiving pavement. Panic surged as he struggled against the weight, his frantic efforts intensified by the encroaching mob. Come on, come on. He urged, his voice laced with desperation as he fought to free himself from the suffocating grasp of death. With a final, desperate exertion, he wriggled free, mere seconds separating him from the advancing horde. Scrambling to his feet, he seized his bag and fled, his heart pounding in rhythm with his thundering footfalls as he raced toward the end of the bridge, the promise of safety beckoning like a beacon in the encroaching darkness. Descending to the road below, Cillian surveyed his surroundings with wary eyes, the smattering of undead shuffling in the distance. His gaze alighted upon the gas station, which was just a couple of blocks to the right of the bridge. With a sense of urgency, Cillian sprang into action, his movement swift and purposeful as he engaged the nearest zombie with a lethal flourish of his blade. The creature fell, yet four more shuffled towards him from the gas station. Surveying the scene, Cillian's gaze fell upon a length of chain lying abandoned nearby, its dual hooks promising a makeshift solution to his plight. Guess the owner wanted to lock up the lot at night. I can work with that, he mused, seizing the chain. Dragging it across the asphalt, he wove a tangled web of obstruction, ensnaring the approaching ghouls in its unforgiving embrace. He stood back after darting around the lot, watching as the creatures fell to the ground, thrashing violently in an attempt to free themselves, with deft movements, he dispatched them one by one, their struggles futile against the cold steel of his blade. With the immediate threat neutralized, Cillian's attention turned to the task at hand. Pulling out the wind-up alarm clock, he gave its mechanism a final twist, ensuring its readiness for the role it was destined to play. Let's find you a good place to hide, shall we? He muttered, scanning the surroundings for suitable cover. His eyes alighted upon a support beam nestled between the pumps its elevation offering both concealment and strategic advantage. With practice precision, he ascended, the alarm clock finding its perch atop the speaker box, its presence shrouded from prying eyes. Satisfied with his handiwork, he cast a glance around the station, his gaze settling upon a nearby store across the street. Several dozen zombies staggered around the parking lot, wandering into parked cars that dotted the lot, 
Despite his movements at the gas station, they were unaware of his presence. With swift and agile movements, Cilia navigated the lot towards the store, his path adjusted on the fly to avoid the lurking ghouls. Leaping from car to car, he evaded the creature's frustrated moans as they missed their chance at a meal. Though he kept them in his sights, his primary focus remained fixed on the store ahead. The last car stood a mere 10 yards from the storefront, which appeared to be a fashionable home goods emporium, housed in an older building adorned with wooden framed windows. A handful of zombies scattered in front, their attention singularly directed at Cillian. One of them lurked dangerously close to a window, drawing Cillian's unwavering gaze. With a burst of speed as he reached solid ground, Cillian dashed towards the ghoul. As its grasping fingers reached out, Cillian seized hold of its shirt, propelling both of them towards the window. Momentum carried them forward, the zombies stumbling under Cillian's force until they collided with the glass. With a resounding crash, the window shattered as the zombie plummeted through. Seizing the opportunity, Cillian swiftly followed, his boot landing firmly on the creature's chest before it could rise again. Thanks for the assist, big guy, he quipped. Cillian plunged his knife deep into the zombie's skull, swiftly ending its own life. Casting a quick glance around the store, his eyes fell upon a display near the entrance, brimming with sturdy cast iron pans. That'll work, he muttered to himself. Hastening over to the display, he strategically placed a cell phone beside the pans, its speaker directed towards the heavy cookware. With a purposeful stride, he swung open the front door before seizing several pans and hurling them through the shattered windows. Though this action risked allowing the zombies outside to breach the store, Cillian's primary concern was the cacophony echoing through the area, potentially drawing even more undead to their location. He checked his watch, shaking his head at the sight. Under ten minutes, you better get a move on, he muttered, his voice tinged with urgency. With a swift pivot, Cillian darted toward the back of the store, the haunting moans of the zombies filling the air as he sprinted. Locating the storeroom door, he burst through, his momentum carrying him past a nearby creature so quickly that it didn't have time to react as he raced by, racing toward his next objective. A five-story mid-rise building several blocks away, Cillian's mind churned with the weight of the impending task. Spotting an empty dumpster on the way, he tossed in another cell phone alarm, banking on the echo to divert the undead's attention. As he closed the distance to the target building, a sinking feeling settled in his gut at the sight of the mob gathered around it. Son of a bitch, he muttered, his gaze sweeping over the amassed horde. Despite the overwhelming odds, a glimmer of determination flickered in his eyes. Probably just some of your buddies inside. Okay, I can work with that, he muttered to himself. Surveying his dwindling arsenal, Cillian weighed his options before settling on the wind-up alarm. I hate to give you up, but I need the loudest possible sound right now. And you're it, he murmured, winding the mechanism and setting the alarm for maximum impact. With a final glance toward the building, Cillian sprinted across the street to a nearby storefront. Utilizing his knife to bypass the lock, he slipped inside, relief flooding him as the interior remained silent. Taking cover by the front door, he scrutinized the adjacent building, formulating a plan of action. Okay, as soon as they're away from the building, you're going to have to haul ass, he muttered to himself. Cillian took a deep breath, bracing himself for the perilous task ahead. You might have 30 seconds once you get to the door. You try the knife first, and if that doesn't work, you break out the gun. With a heavy heart, he acknowledged the harsh reality of the situation. Yeah, I know, it's going to be a bitch and a half to fight your way out, but you don't have a choice. If you don't get to that firing position, the militia is just going to roll on by, and everybody dies. Cillian's resolve solidified just as the alarm clock pierced the silence with its blaring. He observed with rapt attention as the undead horde detached from the building, their lumbering forms converging on the alleyway in response to the disturbance. A sinking feeling settled in his chest as the scene within the building came into focus. The sight confirmed his worst fears. Additional zombies were occupying the interior, serving as a diversion to maintain the mob's attention, and they were more numerous than he had anticipated. Even in the dim light, he could discern the presence of at least a couple of dozen undead figures pressed against the glass. Compounding his predicament, they appeared unusually agitated as if frustrated by their inability to reach whatever had drawn their comrades outside. 
with only minutes remaining until he needed to assume his firing position. The urgency of the situation weighed heavily on Cillian's mind. To hell with the knife. I'm screwed either way, he muttered, retrieving his handgun and ensuring it was primed for action. With the pursuing horde momentarily distracted, he seized the opportunity to make his move. With a burst of speed, he flung open the door and sprinted toward the target building. Several ghoulish figures immediately turned their attention towards him, their jerky movements hastening as they shuffled in his direction. Fortunately, Cillian had a solid 20-yard lead on them. Arriving at the door, he steadied his aim with the handgun, directing his shots towards the corner of the glass. Despite the tempered nature of the glass, his well-placed shots managed to create a sizable hole. With determined effort, he squeezed his hand through the gap, reaching for the deadbolt and swiftly unlocking it. Rushing inside, Cillian slammed the door shut and secured it just moments before the pursuing creatures reached him. His senses heightened, he braced himself for the imminent onslaught, acutely aware that his actions had undoubtedly attracted a significant amount of attention. The air filled with eerie moans, accompanied by the sound of shambling footsteps and objects crashing to the ground. Surveying the office building with frantic urgency, Cillian spotted movement everywhere, his eyes ultimately landing on the stairs positioned halfway along the wall. Breaking away from the door, he lowered his head and sprinted towards the stairwell with all the force he could muster. With a precarious head start, he reached the door just in time, his speed barely outpacing the advancing creatures. Cillian lunged inside the stairwell, slamming the door shut behind him, sealing himself off from the pursuing mob. A moment later, the sound of banging reverberated through the door as the horde reached it, their persistence evident in their relentless assault. That's gonna suck getting out of here, but first things first, I gotta get to the roof, he muttered. Cillian cast a quick glance up the stairwell, a wave of relief washing over him as he detected no immediate sounds echoing from above. With a sense of urgency driving him forward, he wasted no time in ascending the stairs. Glancing down at his watch, he noted with growing apprehension that he had only a scant couple of minutes left before the soldiers were scheduled to initiate their operation. Please be on schedule, he silently implored, his plea directed to the universe as he pressed onward, determined to reach the roof in time. Chapter 3 Alvarez, Acosta, and Leonard stood behind the trucks on the bridge, their figures illuminated by the faint moonlight. Alvarez's gaze pierced the darkness across the river, where the hills loomed ominously, their silhouettes shifting subtly in the night. The impending danger hung heavy in the air. As soon as we start moving, they're going to open fire on us, Sergeant Alvarez declared, his voice low yet resolute. We have to assume they have their trucks ready to go, too. Private Leonard interjected, his tone reflecting the gravity of their situation. Alvarez shook his head confidently, as if he was saying no. Leonard's curiosity was peak. You seem really confident about that, Leonard remarked. Just trying to speak it into existence, Leonard. Alvarez responded, his words tinged with a hint of desperation. If they're just around that bend when we take off, we're going to be in a world of hurt. Leonard's retort held a note of resignation. I think we're well past the wishful thinking stage, Sarge. Alvarez exhaled heavily, conceding to Leonard's point with a nod. How much of a head start do you need? Three minutes. That should give me enough time to pick up Robertson and get across the bridge, Leonard replied, his voice tinged with urgency. What do you think, Acosta? Do you have three minutes in you? Alvarez inquired, turning to the third member of their team. Acosta's lips curved into a wry smile, her demeanor betraying a hint of amusement. Something funny, private? Alvarez queried, raising an eyebrow. Do you have three minutes in you? It just reminded me of one of my girlfriends. She would ask the guys still at the bar around last call something really close to that. Acosta explained, her laughter echoing in the night air. The shared moment of levity provided a brief respite from the tension. Jesus, if that was the bare minimum, then I spent my life going to the wrong bars, Leonard remarked with a chuckle, shaking his head incredulously. Something I will hopefully remember when I head into the next life, which looks like it's going to be a lot sooner than I would have liked. Leonard added solemnly, his gaze fixed on the task ahead. With a nod to Alvarez, he made his way to his truck, his movements deliberate and purposeful, you on the other side, Sarge. Leonard called out. Alvarez glanced toward Acosta, stationed at the rear of the adjacent truck, 
a pile of magazines stacked beside her as she prepared her rifle. With a nod from her, he thumped the side of the truck. Go get him, Leonard, Alvarez urged, his voice a blend of encouragement and concern. With a roar, Leonard's truck surged forward, the engine's growl drowning out the sound of gunfire. Bullets peppered the vehicle, sparking against the metal frame as Acosta and Alvarez unleashed a barrage of return fire. As the chaos unfolded, Alvarez's gaze swept across the landscape, his eyes scanning for any sign of their adversaries. No trucks, please, no trucks, he muttered under his breath, his heart pounding in his chest. Turning his attention to the road across the bridge, Alvarez monitored the curve around the bend with bated breath. Each passing second felt like an eternity as he prayed for a reprieve from the relentless onslaught. Two minutes and forty seconds. We got this, Alvarez murmured to himself his grip tightening on his rifle as he maintained a steady stream of suppressive fire. Meanwhile, Private Leonard raced down the highway, the sound of bullets pinging off the side of the truck filling the air. Despite the danger, he allowed himself a quick glance back toward the hillside, where he spotted a torrent of muzzle flashes. Jesus Christ, Leonard muttered under his breath, his knuckles white as he gripped the steering wheel tightly. Leonard pressed the pedal down with all his might, the engine roaring as he gained more speed, skillfully maneuvering around a corner. Suddenly, he spotted Robertson on the side of the road, frantically waving to catch his attention. Reacting swiftly, Leonard eased the vehicle's speed, just enough for Robertson to get a running start. With impeccable timing, Robertson leaped up, grabbing onto the door as they continued hurtling down the road. Sounds like you guys really pissed them off, Robertson remarked. Shit's about to get real bad, Leonard replied grimly his gaze fixed on the road ahead. No kidding. By the way, thanks for volunteering my ass for this little expedition. I always wanted to drive a booby trap truck, carrying a few hundred thousand rounds of ammunition, right into the middle of a town overrun with the undead. Robertson quipped, his sarcasm tinged with resignation. Don't forget heavily armed assholes on our tails, trying to kill us. Leonard added dryly, a hint of gallows humor coloring his words. Yeah, that too. Thanks for that, Robertson muttered under his breath. Hey, what are friends for? Leonard remarked with a wry smile. As they approached their destination, the weight of their mission hung heavy in the air. Do you know where you're going? Robertson inquired, his voice laced with uncertainty. Cillian said the gas station was just off the bridge on the right. The diversion should have started going off by now, Leonard explained. Great, so we can get there and park. Then what? Nobody ever gave me that part of the plan, Robertson remarked, his voice tinged with apprehension. We're going to find firing positions on the militia once Cillian draws them towards us. We have to hold their attention as long as possible so that the Sarge and Acosta can get as far away from here as possible, Leonard explained, his tone serious and focused. Are we splitting up or staying together? Robertson inquired, his voice betraying a hint of uncertainty. After a moment of consideration, Leonard responded, his voice tinged with trepidation. If we split up, we can make them think we have a bigger force than we have. It'll make them devote more men to us and make it all the more likely we're not walking away from this one. Robertson remarked grimly, his expression mirroring Leonard's unease. Yeah, I know, but our orders are to pull them away from the truck and escape to the west if we can. Leonard replied, his tone resolute despite the looming threat. So best case scenario, we get to wander the nothingness that is rural Washington state, Robertson quipped, his sarcasm tinged with a hint of bitterness. Look at the bright side. The military will consider us dead, so we can hit the road to greener pastures. I'm thinking some beach on the California coast, Leonard suggested, a note of optimism creeping into his voice. I'm thinking Vegas. If there's any place on this planet that still has a strip club in operation, it's Vegas. Robertson mused. Leonard couldn't help but chuckle at Robertson's remark, shaking his head in disbelief at the unexpected turn of conversation. We're facing imminent death, and you're thinking about strip clubs. Leonard quipped, his tone a mix of amusement and incredulity. Don't judge. I'm a man who knows what he likes, and I like titties, Robertson retorted with a smirk. His words laced with a hint of defiance. Shaking his head once more, Leonard focused on the task at hand as he maneuvered the truck onto the bridge. The sight of the advancing zombies ahead served as a stark reminder of the danger that awaited them. Are you ready? Leonard asked, 
his voice tense with anticipation. Let's get this shit show rolling, Robertson replied grimly, his resolve unwavering as they braced themselves for the onslaught. Leonard's foot pressed firmly on the gas pedal, the engine roaring as the truck surged forward, accelerating with a sudden urgency. With deft precision, he maneuvered around the wreckage strewn across the bridge, paying little heed to the undead lurking nearby. His destination lay just a stone's throw away, a mere couple of blocks down the road. The putrid remains of the undead collided with the truck's front grille, some careening beneath its wheels, while others were flung into the air. Inside the cab, the soldiers jostled with each impact, the chaos of the moment palpable. As they reached the far side of the bridge, Leonard executing a sharp right turn onto the adjoining road. Before them, the gas station loomed into view, and a bit of hope washed over them. Yet, their relief was short-lived as they spied a throng of zombies congregating outside a nearby store. Looks like our boy delivered a diversion, Robertson observed, his gaze fixed on the gathering of zombies across the street. Let's just hope that whatever he did is interesting enough to keep those things focused while we find an attack position, Leonard remarked, his tone tinged with apprehension. Pulling up to the gas station, Leonard killed the engine and exited the truck, his senses on high alert. Robertson wasted no time in beginning their ruse, swiftly positioning himself at the pump and feigning an attempt to refuel. What are you doing? Leonard questioned, his brow furrowed with concern. Making it look like we're trying to pump gas, Robertson replied casually. Oh shit, Leonard muttered under his breath, realization dawning upon him. If the power's out, they might think something's up. Robertson nodded in understanding, his expression serious as he formulated a plan. Find your spot, I'll take care of the generator. I'm going to get a few buildings down to the west, Leonard decided. I'll take east then. Let's get these assholes in a crossfire if we can, Robertson agreed, a sense of hope gleaming in his eyes. With a fist bump exchange between them, Leonard dashed off down the street, his footsteps echoing in the silence of the night. Meanwhile, Robertson turned his attention to the store, which had a wooden fence running alongside the entire length of the parking lot Looks like I'm going through the store, Robertson muttered to himself, his grip tightening on his handgun as he approached the locked entrance. As Robertson reached the door, he unleashed a forceful kick, the sound echoing in the quiet street. The door budged but stubbornly refused to yield, prompting him to deliver another powerful blow. This time, the lock shattered, freeing the entrance. No sooner had the barrier given way than a grotesque figure emerged, a zombie, its movements sluggish and menacing. Eschewing the option of gunfire, which could attract more undead, Robertson seized the creature by its tattered shirt and forcefully pulled it to the ground. He dragged the struggling ghoul toward the curb, positioning its head against the hard edge of the sidewalk. Stepping back, he braced himself before delivering a decisive blow, his foot connecting with bone-crushing force. The sickening sound of impact filled the air, followed by a chilling silence broken only by the pooling of blood on the pavement. Always wanted to do that, Robertson muttered to himself, a grim satisfaction coloring his words as he pressed onward into the store. Moving swiftly through the aisles, Robertson maintained a vigilant watch for any signs of movement, but spotting nothing. Robertson cautiously approached the back door, easing it open just enough to survey the fenced-in area beyond. His eyes scanned the space, detecting movement, though there was only one figure in sight. Stepping out into the yard, he reached for a nearby brick to prop the door ajar, ensuring it wouldn't close behind him. At that moment, the creature in the yard became aware of his presence and began shuffling towards him. With a calm demeanor, Robertson waited until the decaying corpse drew near before taking action. He seized the creature by its shirt, forcefully hurling it back against the wall before swiftly incapacitating it with a well-placed blow to the knees. Before the creature could rise again, Robertson delivered a decisive kick to the back of its head, driving its face into the unforgiving bricks. As the lifeless body crumpled to the ground, Robertson turned his attention to the more urgent matters at hand. Okay, generator, where are you hiding at? Robertson muttered to himself, his eyes scanning the area for any sign of the crucial piece of equipment. Finally locating the generator tucked away in a corner, Robertson wasted no time in starting it up relief flooding through him as it sputtered to life. Damn, if I knew it was going to be this easy, we might have been better off going for the gas ourselves, he muttered, his voice tinged with a hint of regret. Before he could dwell further on his thoughts, 
The sudden crack of gunfire shattered the tense silence, causing Robertson to startle. It took him a moment to regain his composure, his senses sharpening as he scanned the surroundings. Finally, he pinpointed the source of the shots, a mid-rise building several blocks away, its rooftop now a haven for chaos. Well, so much for that idea, Robertson muttered ruefully to himself, his jaw clenched with determination. Looks like it's game time. Chapter 4 Cillian perched atop the five-story mid-rise building, his gaze fixed on the river just a couple of blocks away. In his hands lay a weapon he scarcely knew how to handle, yet he clutched it tightly as though his very survival depended on it. Okay, where is everybody at? Cillian muttered to himself, a sense of urgency evident in his voice. I kind of left a mess downstairs and really need to deal with it before it gets any worse. As if in response to his words, Leonard and Robertson appeared, rounding the bend and pausing briefly at the top of the bridge before continuing into town. Okay, it's showtime, Cillian murmured under his breath, stealing himself for what lay ahead. Following the truck along its route, Cillian tracked its movements until it pulled into the gas station. Although his vantage point afforded only a partial view, it was sufficient to confirm their arrival. Okay, Sarge, you're up, Cillian declared, his voice firm. Turning his attention back to the darkened highway, Cillian meticulously checked his weapon once more, ensuring the safety was off and everything was primed for action. He knew he had only one chance at success. Failure was not an option. Seconds stretched into agonizing minutes as he stared intently at the highway, the tension mounting with each passing moment. Finally, the headlights of the truck pierced the darkness as it hurtled down the highway. There you go, Sarge. Get up the road. Cillian urged. His anticipation soared briefly upon spotting the transport truck, only to plummet mere seconds later when a convoy of enemy trucks appeared around the bend. Four of them, manned with soldiers in the back who unleashed a barrage of gunfire toward the truck. Cillian steadied himself, peering through the scope of his rifle. He aligned his aim with the lead truck, recalling the Sarge's instructions, then made slight adjustments ahead of the convoy. Tracking their movements for a moment, he unleashed a rapid stream of fire. Despite the weapon's recoil jerking against him, he persisted, squeezing the trigger with determination. The pain radiated through his body, but he persevered, relentless in his assault. Though he couldn't discern where his bullet struck, he knew he was close enough to draw their attention. As the last round discharged from his magazine, he glanced up to witness the convoy halting abruptly in the middle of the road. Howdy boys, thanks for stopping by. He quipped wryly, adrenaline coursing through his veins. Cillian glanced down at his bag, swiftly retrieving another magazine. It took him a moment to orient it correctly, but with a satisfying click, it was secured in place and another round was chambered. Raising his head once more, he found himself puzzled by the militia's lack of retaliation. Surely, they must have identified the source of the muzzle flashes. Do they have a sniper? Cillian muttered to himself, a flicker of fear creeping into his mind. If they had a sniper, they would have fired by now, wouldn't they? Plus, it's dark, so they wouldn't have a good shot. After shaking off his apprehension, Cillian dismissed the thought. Night vision exists, dumbass. But still, this is the tallest building within view, so surely they would have my position pegged by now. His debating quickly turned to alarm as a bright flash illuminated the night, followed by the unmistakable trajectory of an RPG hurtling toward him. Holy oh, shit! Cillian scrambled to his feet, his heart pounding with adrenaline, and hurried away from the perilous edge of the building. He barely managed a few steps before the deafening impact reverberated through the structure. The explosion violently shook the entire building, shattering glass on the fifth floor. A surge of fear shot through Cillian as he instinctively dove to the ground, feeling the heat burn the hairs on the back of his neck. Turning around, he witnessed a colossal fireball engulfing the spot where he had just been firing from, the structure partially collapsing in its fiery embrace. You gotta move, man. Move? He urged himself, his mind racing as he scrambled to his feet to move towards the stairwell door. As he swung open the door, a momentary pause seized him, his gaze instinctively drawn back towards the highway. Memories of his mission flooded his thoughts, momentarily overshadowing the chaos unfolding around him. In the distance, faint taillights pierced through the darkness, but he couldn't tell how many sets of them there were. Yet amidst the uncertainty, 
A wave of relief washed over him at the distant sound of gunfire echoing from the bridge. Got at least one of them, he muttered, his attention now fully devoted to his own survival. With his part of the mission accomplished, Cillian shifted his focus to his own safety. He flung open the door to the stairwell and hurried inside, only to be met with a wall of smoke that stung his eyes and choked his lungs. Struggling to see through the haze, Cillian pressed on, his hands groping for the reassuring grip of the handrails as he descended the stairs. Each step felt precarious as he fought his way through the thick smoke, his senses on high alert. Suddenly, the shrill wail of alarm bells pierced the air, jolting Cillian from his concentration. The urgency of the situation intensified as he quickened his pace. Oh hell, that's not good, he muttered grimly. Uncertain of the cause of the delayed alarm, he speculated that the explosion might have damaged the sensors on the fifth floor. However, in the grand scheme of things, the reason was inconsequential, for the blaring alarm signaled imminent danger, drawing every undead creature within a six-block radius toward him. After overcoming the obstacles on the fifth floor, where smoke billowed ominously, he encountered a thick haze upon reaching the blasted open door. While most of the smoke dissipated upward, enough seeped through the stairwell to create an uncomfortable descent. Reaching the landing of the second floor, with the entrance to the first floor in sight, he paused to consider his next move. Do I look or do I run? Cillian pondered aloud. As he grappled with his internal debate, a series of thunderous bangs echoed from the stairwell door below. He paused, his senses honed to discern the source of the commotion, distinguishing it from the sporadic movements of passing ghouls. However, it was a sustained pounding, indicating creatures trying to get inside. Guess I'm going to go take a look, he muttered, his voice tinged with resignation. With purposeful steps, he unlatched the door to the second floor, slipping inside and shutting it swiftly behind him. A wave of apprehension washed over him, as he felt the gusts of wind and caught sight of distant flames flickering ominously. Jesus, how powerful was that thing, he muttered, his voice tinged with disbelief as he surveyed the aftermath of the explosion. The force had wrought havoc upon the building, shattering windows and raining fiery debris into the offices. Yet mercifully, the flames had not yet consumed everything in their path. Through the billowing smoke and flames, Cillian discerned faint movements, sending a shiver down his spine. Instinctively, he reached for his rifle, only to hesitate, mindful of the peril of attracting unwanted attention. If I make noise, I could give myself away. He mused aloud, exhaling heavily as he drew his knife and moved cautiously through the labyrinth of cubicles toward the heart of the room, where the majority of movement seemed concentrated. As he rounded a corner, his eyes alighted upon three zombies shambling away from the inferno, their grotesque forms eerily illuminated by the flickering flames. With a quick glance around, Cillian's gaze settled upon a large rolling chair nearby. Let's see how this goes, he murmured. Cillian swiftly seized the chair, hauling it to the center of the aisle and positioning himself behind it. With a deft spin, he turned the chair, so its back faced the approaching zombies, gripping the armrest tightly before propelling it down the aisle. The sound of the chair's wheels scraping against the floor drew the attention of the nearest zombie, prompting it to shuffle closer to Cillian. However, before it could advance further, the chair collided with it, causing the creature to stumble forward. Its knees buckled as it crashed into the seat, its face meeting the back of the chair with a sickening thud. Without hesitation, Cillian pushed the chair with enough momentum to send the fallen zombie hurtling towards its companions. The impact knocked the other two creatures off balance, sending them careening into the nearby fire. As the two stumbling zombies landed with a heavy thud, their bodies engulfed in flames, the one in the chair managed to regain its footing. With a determined shove, Cillian spun the chair's back around, using it as a makeshift barrier. With a swift charge, he drove his shoulder into the back of the chair, propelling the zombie backward into the blazing inferno. It tumbled atop its companions, engulfed in flames. For a moment, Cillian stood triumphant, proud of his improvised strategy. However, his victory was short-lived as he watched in dismay as some of the creatures began to rise from the flames, still burning. He muttered to himself a hint of self-deprecation in his voice. Clearly, I didn't think this through. Before the zombies could begin to stir and spread the flames, Cillian sprang into action. Grasping the chair tightly, he heaved it with all his might. The heavy piece of furniture found its mark, 
striking the topmost zombie squarely in the chest and sending it crashing down onto its companions below. Though he knew it was only a temporary solution, the chair provided enough weight to keep the undead at bay long enough for the flames to inflict significant damage, rendering them immobile. Cillian remained vigilant, keeping a careful watch over the fallen creatures for several tense moments to ensure they wouldn't rise again. Satisfied that they were incapacitated, he redirected his focus to the source of movement near the window. Navigating his way through the maze of cubicles, Cillian spotted the lone remaining creature, its attention fixed on the world outside. He seized the opportunity, quietly approaching the distracted ghoul from behind. Without hesitation, he drove his knife into the back of its head, swiftly dispatching it to the floor. Taking a moment to survey his surroundings after the deed was done, Cillian breathed a sigh of relief, noting the absence of any further movement on the floor. That's one problem down, Cillian remarked, a note of relief creeping into his voice as he surveyed the now quiet room. However, as he peered out the window, his optimism waned, and one giant ass problem taking its place. He muttered grimly, observing the horde of zombies converging around the building in response to the blaring alarm. Amidst the chaos, he noticed three trucks parked nearby. Those assholes must be on foot. Assuming I can get out of here alive, I need to pay them a visit. He resolved, glancing down at his knife and envisioning it, piercing the pickup truck tires. That way, even if the blast doesn't kill them, they won't be able to catch up to Alvarez and Acosta. Cillian looked across the large office floor, witnessing the fire spreading everywhere. Wait, there has to be a fire escape, right? Surely they wouldn't just have one stairwell. Cillian scoured the office floor for an escape route, eventually spotting a small red exit sign. With a deep breath, he cautiously pushed open the door, relieved to find the path clear. Okay, I'm in business, he muttered. Exiting through the door and descending down the stairs to an exterior door, Cillian found himself on the side of the building opposite the gas station, hoping to evade the throng of ghouls milling about in the street. Approaching the door cautiously, he cracked it open just a fraction, his hand poised on the emergency release. Peering outside, he scanned the immediate vicinity for any signs of danger. Assured by the absence of immediate threats, he swiftly slipped through the narrow opening and stepped out into the open. Let's see about those trucks. Chapter 5 Private Leonard sat at a corner table of a small, dimly lit restaurant, strategically positioned to remain hidden from any wandering eyes outside, through the window. He observed the zombie activity in the adjacent parking lot, their movements drawn by the blaring alarm clock, yet oblivious to his presence. The distant echo of gunshots reverberated from the top of a mid-rise building several blocks away. While he couldn't see the muzzle flashes, he could hear them with ease. Get after them, kid. Pull them all our way, Leonard muttered. Peering intently through the glass, he awaited the arrival of the militia he had called upon, but several moments passed without any sign of reinforcements. What the hell? Ah, damn kid, don't tell me you missed, Leonard muttered, frustration creeping into his tone. Suddenly, streaks of light traced the sky as an RPG streak towards the distant building, followed by a deafening explosion that forced Leonard to shield his eyes. Jesus fucking Christ, they have rockets? He exclaimed, his hands fumbling for the radio at his waist. Robertson, did you see that shit? Leonard barked into the radio, his voice urgent with concern. Yeah, they weren't kidding when they said they were bringing in the big guns, came Robertson's voice over the crackling radio. What do you want to do? Leonard inquired, his mind racing with the sudden escalation of the situation. It doesn't change anything. We hold their attention for as long as we can, Robertson replied, his voice steady. But they have rockets. They can just blow out the whole building and leave those things to clean up the mess. Leonard protested, a hint of fear lacing his words. Look, man, if you want to run, I'm not going to hold it against you, Robertson said, his tone firm yet empathetic. I'm going to stay and fight at least until they try to blow my ass up, at which point I'm out. Though reluctant, Leonard begrudgingly acquiesced. Okay, I'm with you. But as soon as they put anything on their shoulder, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. We're still meeting up in Vegas, right? Robertson interjected. As long as you're springing for the first round of lap dances, Leonard replied with a wry grin. You got a deal, Robertson chuckled. As the conversation shifted back to the impending danger, 
Robertson's voice crackled over the radio once more. I got movement. Three trucks, looks like four, maybe five guys in each. Leonard's heart rate quickened as he listened intently to Robertson's report. Jesus, how do you want to play it? Looks like they're stopping short of the gas station and moving up on foot. If I didn't know better, I'd swear that they didn't trust us. Robertson said, I swear, the nerve of some people. Observing the scene from his vantage point across the street, Robertson formulated a plan. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to wait until they move away from their trucks and get to the gas station. Why don't you just open fire on them now? Leonard asked. Because they'll assume that I'm trying to pull them away from the truck and might ignore me. Plus, there's 15 of these assholes, and half of them are on the other side of the trucks. I'm not looking to get blown up quite yet, Robertson retorted. Fair enough. When do you want me to start shooting? Robertson thought it over for a moment before responding. Hopefully, when I start shooting, it will draw their attention towards me. When that happens, you'll have the drop on them, at least for a moment. Okay, you unload one mag into them, then get the hell out of there. I assume you picked a building with a back entrance, Leonard said. Thank you for assuming I'm a moron. Robertson quipped. Well, you are about to open fire on a group with rocket-propelled grenades. Point taken. But yes, I was smart enough to have an exit strategy, Robertson said. Good. The tension hung in the air for several moments before the silence was broken. Do you think the kid is okay? Leonard's voice was laced with concern as they awaited the opportune moment to strike. If any civilian was going to walk away from that, it would be him. Robertson reassured, his confidence unwavering. I'm sure he's fine and figuring out a way to get the hell out of here. Just like we're going to be doing here in a few minutes. Leonard stated confidently. Their conversation was abruptly cut short as Robertson spotted movement among the enemy ranks. Sooner than that, they're on the move. Looks like a group of eight are moving up towards the station. A few are headed back towards Cillian, and the rest are guarding the truck. Adrenaline surged through Leonard's veins as he braced himself for the imminent confrontation. How many you got? Four, but only have a clear shot on two of them, Robertson replied, his voice tinged with anticipation. Make it hurt, Leonard urged. I plan on it. Get ready, Robertson affirmed, his tone resolute as they prepared to engage the enemy. Robertson swiftly holstered his radio, his movements purposeful as he brought the rifle to bear, peering through the window with a trained eye. His target, an exposed figure on the right, came into focus. With calculated precision, he squeezed the trigger, the report of the gunshot shattering the tense silence. The bullet found its mark, striking the man in the upper thigh, sending him crashing to the ground in agony. Though likely fatal at that range, the wound would ensure a slow and agonizing demise. Adjusting his aim with practiced efficiency, Robertson redirected his attention to the man's companion unleashing a barrage of rapid gunfire. The rounds found their mark, piercing the man's chest, but he continued to writhe on the ground, stubbornly clinging to life. His fingers pressed the button on the radio, urgency lacing his voice as he shouted, Body armor. They have body armor. Before his warning could fully register, a hail of bullets tore through the building, forcing Robertson to seek cover. Emerging briefly, he returned fire, forcing the assailants to duck behind their trucks. The exchange of gunfire intensified, the sound of bullets piercing the air mingling with the chaos of battle. As the firefight raged on, Robertson scrambled backward through the office, reloading his weapon amidst the relentless barrage. Bullets continued to tear through the building, their origin now shifting to the gas station side. Robertson fired off several more shots toward the windows, determined to keep the enemy at bay. As he neared the back door, the gunfire outside abruptly ceased replaced by the ominous sound of something heavy crashing through the window before landing on the ground with a thud. His eye spotted a grenade as he turned and rushed towards the back. Robertson burst through the door, his heart pounding with adrenaline as he darted into the dimly lit alleyway. He struggled to slam the door shut, but before he could, the explosion erupted behind him. The shockwave knocked him off his feet, sending him crashing to the ground, a sharp pain shooting through his arm from the shrapnel that grazed him. Shaking off the dizziness, he snapped back to reality at the sound of eerie moans echoing through the alley. Scrambling upright, Robertson's eyes locked onto the approaching figures, half a dozen zombies closing in on him, drawn by the commotion. Without hesitation, 
he raised his rifle, firing precise shots that dropped the nearest two undead, granting him a brief reprieve to assess the situation. A flurry of footsteps behind him jolted Robertson into action once more. He whirled around, squeezing the trigger in a panic spray of bullets that peppered the building's facade. One militiaman ducked for cover, while another took a hit to the face, sending him crashing to the ground, incapacitated. With no time to spare, Robertson surged forward, shouldering past the remaining zombies in his path as he veered towards the adjacent street. Gunshots echoed behind him, the militiamen taking care of the ghouls in their path. I think I pissed them off, he muttered to himself as he moved. Robertson's heart raced as he made the turn at the next block, his eyes scanning the area for any signs of danger. Several zombies lurked in the vicinity, but still several yards away. To his left loomed an imposing office building, its darkened windows offering little clue as to what awaited him inside. If they're flanking me, there's no chance I'm getting to the next block. Robertson muttered to himself, his voice edged with urgency. Robertson sprinted towards the office building, his heart pounding with adrenaline. The large windows at the front of the structure loomed ahead as he fired off a few rounds from his rifle. With determination etched on his face, he propelled himself forward, ducking his head and leading with his shoulder as he crashed through the glass barrier and into the dimly lit interior. As he hit the floor, the sharp crack of gunfire erupted from outside, sending shards of glass scattering. Rising swiftly to his feet, Robertson kept his head low, navigating through the labyrinth like corridors of the office building. Bullets whizzed past him, but he pressed on, his senses sharp, alert to any potential threats lurking in the shadows. Amidst the chaos of flying bullets, Robertson found himself behind a cubicle, a safe distance from the shattered window he had burst through. He scanned the darkened office space, estimating the distance to the nearest exit. But before he could make a move, the sound of footsteps crunching on broken glass pierced the air. Robertson froze, his breath caught in his throat as he listened intently. Three sets of boots entered the room, their presence confirmed by the telltale sound. With a grim resolve, Robertson counted each step, his mind racing with strategies to outmaneuver his pursuers. When the footsteps drew nearer, Robertson broke from cover, moving swiftly and silently through the shadows. He darted into a nearby cubicle, just in time, peering out cautiously as a militiaman methodically searched each workstation. Twenty yards from freedom, Robertson knew he had to act fast or else he wouldn't have another opportunity. Robertson bided his time, waiting until the militiaman drew closer before springing into action. With a quick step, he emerged from cover, unleashing a flurry of shots towards his target. The sharp cracks of gunfire echoed through the office space as he landed several hits, though the exact locations remained uncertain. However, it was enough to drop his enemy. As bullets tore through the air, shredding cubicles and scattering debris, Robertson darted towards the beckoning promise of escape. He crashed through the back door, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he stumbled into the alleyway beyond. With a sigh of relief, he slammed the door shut behind him, his eyes scanning the dimly lit alley for any immediate threats. A handful of zombies lurked in the shadows, their vacant eyes glinting with hunger. Desperation fueled his search for a makeshift barricade, but his efforts proved futile in the sparse surroundings. The alley opened up into a desolate parking lot, devoid of vehicles and offering little in the way of cover. A lone zombie shambled dangerously close, prompting a sudden burst of inspiration. Without hesitation, Robertson seized the undead creature, dragging it back towards the doorway. He spun it around so that its back was to him, backing up into the space where the door opened. Robertson grappled with the creature, its wild thrashing testing his strength. Yet, relief washed over him as the door burst open, striking the creature squarely in the face. With the arrival of the militiaman, Robertson seized the opportunity, pushing the creature towards the nearest man who became its new target, suffering a vicious bite to the shoulder. Robertson quickly drew his handgun, the shots echoing in the tense air as they found their mark on the chest protector of the assailant, sending him crashing to the ground. As the wounded man fought for breath, he darted forward and fired, delivering a fatal shot to the head to end his suffering. The sudden discharge of a firearm jolted Robertson, his gaze snapping towards the bitten man who had managed to turn the gun on the creature, the deafening blast so close to his head momentarily stunning the wounded man. Reacting swiftly, Robertson took aim, unleashing a single round that silenced the man's struggles. Breathing heavily, 
Robertson took a moment to collect himself, his attention then shifting towards the western horizon, his mind already preparing for the next challenge ahead. The river is just a few blocks away. You better not keep me waiting, Leonard, he muttered before continuing on. Chapter 6 Private Leonard positioned himself strategically at the front window of a quaint restaurant, nestled conveniently across from the gas station. From this vantage point, he observed the approach of eight heavily armed men. Some among them cautiously aimed their weapons toward the zombies lingering across the street, ready to react if the undead dared to encroach upon their territory. Come on, Robertson. They're getting close to the truck, Leonard murmured urgently. As the militiamen secured a perimeter around the gas station, Leonard's hand instinctively reached for his radio, intending to have Robertson hold his fire as the explosion threatened to decimate a significant portion of their group in one fell swoop. Before he could, however, the unmistakable crack of gunfire echoed down the street. Damn it. Leonard cursed under his breath, witnessing the men pivot swiftly toward the source of the disturbance. Their attention diverted from their original objective. The two individuals stationed by the truck promptly retreated to the safety of the street. With their backs turned, Leonard found himself with easy targets in sight. Rising swiftly, he swung open the restaurant's front door and wasted no time in unleashing a barrage of gunfire. His initial shots found their mark, slamming into the backs of two gunmen with force. Though he couldn't ascertain whether they were fatal, the impact was sufficient to send them sprawling to the ground. As four of the men pivoted to return fire, Leonard was compelled to retreat, bullets tearing through the establishment's front windows. Opting against seeking refuge in the rear, he instead dashed to the nearest wall, seeking cover. Crouched behind the barrier, Leonard bided his time, listening keenly to the approaching footsteps of his adversaries. When they drew near enough, he seized the opportunity, thrusting his weapon through a shattered window and unleashing a volley of rounds. While it was difficult to discern the outcome, Leonard observed at least one figure crumple to the ground, while the others scattered in disarray. Leonard's attention snapped to one of the attackers sprinting toward the rear, triggering his reflex to follow suit. Bullets tore through the building's facade, propelling Leonard to the ground, his body sliding across the floor towards the safety of the kitchen. Clutching the doorframe, Leonard pulled himself through, finding momentary cover behind the solid walls. Regaining his footing, he hurried towards the back door, a sense of urgency gnawing at him. He hesitated as his hand reached for the door handle aware that the attacker on the flank could easily pick him off. Pausing, Leonard's gaze flickered to the pots and pans on the stovetop. Leonard seized a hefty pan, then braced himself against the wall, his heart pounding with adrenaline. With a swift motion, he swung the door wide open and hurled the pan with all his might, just as the first shots rang out. A bullet struck the pan with a resounding clang as Leonard fell to the ground. Taking aim, Leonard focused on the militiamen in his line of sight and unleashed a barrage of gunfire, the recoil reverberating through his body. Some rounds found their mark, impacting the man's vest with dull thuds, while others pierced his legs with deadly accuracy. Private Leonard was startled by the agonizing screams emanating from the man, yet their intensity was soon eclipsed by the rapid succession of gunshots echoing from the front of the kitchen. With a swift adjustment of his aim, Leonard fired back towards the kitchen door, simultaneously propelling himself into the adjacent alleyway with frantic kicks of his feet. Slamming the door shut behind him, he dashed westward. As Leonard hurried a block ahead, he veered sharply to the side, seeking refuge. But before he could reach the safety of cover, a barrage of bullets whizzed through the air, with most missing their mark but one hitting his shoulder. Leonard yelled out in pain, Son of a bitch. Leonard crumpled to the ground, his body ablaze with searing pain shooting through every nerve. The cacophony of gunfire continued to erupt behind him, but he mustered every ounce of strength to drag himself to safety, inching behind cover. With gritted teeth, he seized his rifle with his good arm, maneuvering it around the corner of the building, despite the agony coursing through him. Firing haphazardly, his shots were erratic, but they served their purpose, driving his pursuers into hiding behind their own barriers. As the clicks of his rifle signaled its emptiness, he slung the spent weapon over his shoulder, fingers fumbling to retrieve his handgun, scanning his surroundings for any semblance of refuge, however no place was evident. Well, that figures, he muttered grimly. Leonard surveyed the desolate street, 
his heart quickening as a cacophony of noise drew the attention of a dozen zombies advancing just 20 yards away. Knowing he couldn't outrun both the undead horde and the approaching militia, he weighed his options carefully. Determined, Leonard thrust his arm back around the corner of the building, firing off shots in rapid succession to keep the militia at bay. With each discharge, the zombies lurched closer, their groans filling the air with a chilling intensity. As his magazine emptied, Leonard swiftly replaced it, his movements precise as he maintained suppressing fire. Bullets bounced off nearby structures, but the sturdy building shielded him from harm. With the zombies closing in to a mere five yards, Leonard made a split-second decision and darted out from behind cover. Keeping low, he sprinted through the grasping hands of the undead, narrowly evading their desperate attempts to seize him. Some of the creatures diverted their attention to pursue him, while others shuffled towards an adjacent alleyway. Leonard pressed on, taking a sharp turn onto the next street, which was filled with a collection of businesses and offices. As he fled, the unmistakable sound of sustained gunfire erupted behind him, undoubtedly directed at the encroaching horde of zombies. Thanks for the decoy, fellas. Leonard muttered wryly, acknowledging the unintended assistance of the undead as he navigated the obstacle-laden streets. Aware of the looming threat behind him, Leonard assessed his options grimly. There's no way I'm going to outrun these guys, he acknowledged, his mind racing for a solution. An idea sparked in Leonard's mind. Hide and seek, he mused aloud, the plan forming rapidly as he approached the nearest establishment. With a forceful kick, he breached the door, swiftly moving to repeat the process at neighboring stores, creating a trail of confusion and uncertainty in his wake. That should keep them guessing. Leonard remarked, a note of satisfaction in his voice as he moved towards the last business on the block, a small clothing store. Leonard sprinted to the far end of the street, desperation driving him as he reached the store. With a swift kick, he shattered the door and bolted inside the small clothing store. Glancing back, he watched in dread as several zombies lurched towards him, threatening to dismantle his carefully laid plans. His heart pounding, Leonard instinctively raised his gun, poised to defend himself, before his gaze swept the interior of the store. Relief flooded over him as he spotted the back checkout counter, a self-contained sanctuary enclosed on all sides by counters. I can use that, Leonard quipped. He didn't opt for silence. Instead, he let out a sharp whistle hoping to draw more zombies into the store with him. Gradually, his risky gambit paid off as a dozen of the undead creatures shuffled their way through the entrance. Taking cover behind the counter, Leonard positioned his rifle on its surface, ready to reload. He quickly slapped a fresh magazine into his weapon, all the while keeping a vigilant eye on the advancing horde. No sooner had he completed the reload than the first of the creatures reached the counter. Come on, assholes. I don't have all day. Leonard taunted, his voice laced with defiance. Leonard took a step back, ensuring a safe distance between himself and the encroaching creatures, yet maintaining a clear line of sight towards the store's entrance. His senses heightened, Leonard braced himself for the impending confrontation. However, instead of the anticipated hail of bullets or a full-blown assault, the only sound that pierced the tense silence was the unmistakable thud of two heavy objects hitting the ground. Shit. Leonard cursed under his breath. Leonard swiftly took cover behind the counter, just as twin explosions tore through the building. The force of the blasts shattered the counter and obliterated the zombies on the opposite side. Splinters of wood pierced Leonard's skin, while remnants of the undead slammed against the wall behind him. With a quick pivot, he surveyed the back door, noting a couple of still-moving creatures. Despite their torn torsos and mangled limbs, their heads remained intact. Leonard aimed his rifle with precision, dispatching both threats with a single shot each, quelling the immediate danger. Though agony surged through his body from the bullet lodged in his shoulder and debris scattered throughout, blood seemed to flow from every wound Leonard pressed on. With determination, he navigated towards the back room, inching closer to the safety of the back. Every movement was a battle against excruciating pain, yet he persevered, mindful of the possibility of a frontal assault. But as he crawled, no further attacks came. Maybe they assumed they got me, Leonard speculated aloud. Leonard cautiously swung open the back door, only to be met with a hail of bullets. The sharp sting of one piercing his gut forced him to stagger back, clutching his wound in agony. Despite the pain, he managed to return fire. Slumping against the wall, Leonard grimaced, 
pain nearly incapacitating him. With a shaky hand, he drew his handgun, peeking around the corner to unleash a barrage of shots in return. The relentless onslaught of gunfire pinned him in place, driving him to seek cover. Glancing down at his trembling legs, he winced at the sight of debris embedded in his flesh, a jagged shard of wood protruding cruelly from just above his knee. A resigned sigh escaped Leonard's lips as he surveyed the dire situation. He knew he was outmatched, lacking both the firepower to repel his assailants and the mobility to flee to safety. With grim acceptance, he reached for his radio. Robertson, if you're still kicking, get the hell out of town. Leonard's voice crackled with grim determination. They got me pinned down, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of it. Desperation tinged Robertson's response, his voice crackling with urgency. Where are you? I'll come get you. But Leonard knew better. There's no time, he murmured, his gaze fixed on the open doorway. The promise of escape, now nothing more than a fleeting illusion. A bitter smile tugged at Leonard's lips as he exchanged final words with his comrade. It was a hell of a run, though, Robertson. When you get to Vegas, make sure to get a lap dance for me. Damn it, man. Stop talking like that. Where are you? I'll come get you. Robertson's plea echoed through the static, but Leonard's fate had already been sealed. As another volley of gunfire echoed through the shattered doorway, a hand grenade flew through, clanging against a counter and down onto the floor. Leonard's retort cut through the chaos. Just so you know, you guys are a bunch of pussies. Can't win a straight-up fight. With his ammunition spent and his strength waning, Leonard's gaze shifted to the grenade lying just beyond his reach. So close, he muttered, his voice a mere whisper as he resigned himself to his fate. The detonation ripped through the air, shattering the remnants of the building and silencing Leonard's final thoughts. As the dust settled, two shadowy figures emerged from the wreckage. One of the targets eliminated, the militia's terse declaration hung heavy in the air. The voice on the radio crackled once more, urgency lacing every word. Then get your ass to the river. Chapter 7 Robertson's grip on the radio tightened as a distant explosion reverberated through the building where he sought refuge. The blast, a few blocks away, rattled the structure, causing dust to cascade from the ceiling. Leonard. Leonard, his voice echoed through the empty room, but silence greeted him in return. With a surge of frustration, Robertson hurled the radio to the ground before shouldering his rifle, ready for whatever came next. Across the street, movement caught his attention. From the office building opposite his own hiding spot, figures emerged. There had been a tense standoff, but fueled by anger and grief, Robertson resolved it. Come get some, assholes, he shouted, unleashing a hail of bullets into the neighboring windows. His aim was wild, fueled more by emotion than precision, but it served its purpose, to vent his frustration at the loss of his friend. Ducking as return fire tore through the building, Robertson retreated, keeping low to avoid the hail of bullets. Luck seemed to be on his side as he evaded being hit. Reaching the rear of the building, he burst through the door into the alleyway, rifle raised, ready to confront whatever awaited him. At the far end of the alley, he spotted movement and opened fire, forcing a militiaman to seek cover. Seizing the opportunity, Robertson made a swift retreat down the block. As he rounded the corner of the next building, he found himself confronted by several zombies blocking his path to the water, just a block away. Without hesitation, he fired in the direction he had come, hoping to deter any pursuers. Guess I'm going through them, he muttered, stealing himself for the onslaught. Lowering his shoulder, he plowed through the undead, bullets whizzing past him as he focused solely on reaching the river. His legs pumped furiously as gunfire intensified behind him, but his determination never wavered. The river's edge loomed ahead, and with a final burst of effort, he launched himself into the frigid water below. The impact was jarring, the icy embrace of the river sending shockwaves through his body. Fighting against the numbing cold, Robertson forced himself to stay submerged, bullets peppering the water surface above him. Only when his lungs screamed for air did he resurface, gasping for breath as he scanned the riverbank for signs of pursuit. Relief flooded through him as he realized the militiamen had withdrawn, their distant figures retreating down the street. Oh, thank God, he murmured, sucking in lungfuls of chilly air. With aching limbs, he let the current carry him away from the danger, waiting until he was safely out of sight of the last building before hauling himself onto the opposite bank. Lying on his back, Robertson shivered violently, his teeth chattering as he attempted to warm himself. 
Better get moving, he muttered through clenched teeth. Don't want to go through all of that only to freeze to death on the side of the river. Robertson hoisted himself up the riverbank, his muscles protesting after the icy plunge. He scanned the surroundings with caution, taking in the desolate landscape and the distant silhouette of a town illuminated by the moon's gentle glow. There better be some dry clothes in there, he muttered to himself, eyeing the distant buildings as he began his trek toward them. The town appeared to be about a mile away, and he approached it cautiously, keenly aware of the potential dangers lurking within. As he drew closer to the outskirts, Robertson observed slow, uncoordinated movements on the roads ahead. The sight brought a measure of relief. The presence of the undead meant a lesser likelihood of encountering militia forces. He checked his ammunition supply, grimacing at the meager reserves. I better be right about nobody being in town, or else this is going to be a short fight, he muttered, steeling himself for whatever lay ahead. Moving off the road, he approached a row of houses, cautiously checking each one for signs of life. The first house he checked was a letdown. He peered through the window, seeing several figures shambling about inside. Undeterred, he moved on, wanting a break from the constant fighting. At the second house, he breathed a sigh of relief upon finding it empty. Now we're talking, he murmured, making his way to the back door and slipping inside, securing it behind him. Shivering from the cold, Robertson wasted no time in seeking warmth. He hurried to the kitchen, grateful to find a gas stove. With a flick of a switch, he ignited the burners, reveling in the comforting heat that filled the room. Shedding his wet clothes, he basked in the warmth for what felt like an eternity, finally feeling the chill recede from his bones. After ensuring his clothes were set out to dry, Robertson surveyed his surroundings, his gaze drawn to a row of houses across the street. Among them, a four-wheel drive pickup caught his eye. No way that's going to make it to Vegas on a single tank of gas. But if I can siphon off enough fuel from these other cars, I just might make it. He mused, considering his options. Thoughts of a risky journey through militia territory gave him pause, but a plan began to form in his mind. What am I saying? Vegas is due south of here, which means going through Boise and militia-controlled territory. But if I stay off-road and stay in the wilderness, he reasoned though doubts lingered. But they're surely going to have patrols out and about, especially with tensions this high. If they spot someone in a military uniform, they're going to shoot first and never mind about the questions. As he contemplated his next move, his attention was drawn to family portraits adorning the walls. One figure stood out, a man in mechanic's clothes towering over his loved ones. Inspiration struck, and Robertson hurried to the bedroom, finding a set of blue-collar clothing that fit him surprisingly well. At least if I run into a patrol, I might be able to pass myself off as a local just trying to get out of the area. He reasoned, slipping into the disguise. Returning to the kitchen, Robertson basked in the warmth a while longer, formulating the remainder of his plan, beginning to believe it was doable. Okay, I get the truck, get every gas container I can find in town, fill them up and hit the road. Stay off road, edge towards the west as far as I can and just keep pushing south. Private Robertson felt a creeping warmth spreading through him, a sensation both physical and emotional as he stood alone in the dimly lit kitchen. His fingers hovering over the rusty metal cupboards, hesitated, halted by an unexpected wave of guilt that washed over him. But is it right to walk away from my people? He murmured softly to himself, his voice barely audible in the stillness of the abandoned house. If I left now, maybe I could catch back up to the Sarge and Acosta? The notion lingered in his mind for a fleeting moment before he shook his head, dismissing it with a wary sigh. That wasn't my job, though. And with the ammo I have left, I wouldn't be able to do much against the militia. Getting yourself killed isn't going to help them reach Spokane. He rationalized his gaze drifting towards the scant supply of canned goods tucked away in the cupboard, as he debated with himself. With a resigned shrug, he reached for a can of soup with a pop-top lid, his movements mechanical as he grabbed a pot and set it upon the stovetop. As the soup began to heat up, Robertson's internal monologue continued, a solitary dialogue with himself in the desolate kitchen. You could always go back to the factory and help that captain out, he muttered bitterly, his lips curling into a wry smirk. Of course, based on how badly you just got your ass kicked by those militia, that's probably a lost cause as well. Stirring the soup absent-mindedly, Robertson's thoughts drifted towards the futility of the conflict raging outside. 
Besides, this whole thing is stupid as hell. We should be dealing with the real threat, the zombies, not shooting back and forth at each other. You did your part, laid your life on the line, and what did it get you? Some dead friends, some trauma, you're going to spend decades working through. All so that more bullets could get into the hands of people who are going to use it to shoot at other people. With a decisive nod, he reaffirmed his resolve, his gaze fixated on the simmering soup before him. You're done with this bullshit, and you know it. He exclaimed, the fervor in his voice echoing off the cold, empty walls of the kitchen. Nobody is going to come looking for you. Nobody is going to think less of you if you run. And even if they did, who cares? The only person you have to answer to is you. Testing the temperature of the soup with a cautious fingertip, Robertson nodded in satisfaction as he poured it into a worn ceramic bowl. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to eat your first hot meal and God only knows how long. Then you're going to get a few change of clothes and every scrap of food you can find in this block of houses. Load up that truck and hit the road. No more searching for trouble. No more getting on a war footing. If somebody takes a shot at you, that's one thing. But no more picking sides in a war that doesn't need to be fought. Carrying the steaming bowl into the dimly lit living room, Robertson settled into a plush recliner, relishing the comfort it provided as he savored each spoonful of soup. Just don't get too comfy there, Robertson. You may be over the whole war thing, but those militia boys aren't. He cautioned himself, a faint smile tugging at the corners of his lips. Can't be taking a nap just yet. Forcing himself to sit up, Robertson refused to succumb to the exhaustion that threatened to overwhelm him. With a final nod of resolve, he pushed himself to his feet, his steps purposeful as he prepared to embark on a new journey. Okay, let's get this show on the road, he declared to the empty room, his voice resolute with the promise of a fresh start. Chapter 8 Cillian's heart sank as the distant explosion echoed throughout the town. He had been eavesdropping on the conversation between Robertson and Leonard, silently observing the deteriorating situation with growing unease. Now with the echoes of gunfire fading into the silence once more, he felt compelled to break his silence. I'm sorry, Robertson. Cillian's voice crackled over the radio, heavy with regret. He was a good man. The absence of a response from Robertson left Cillian with a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. Robertson, are you there? He called out, his voice tinged with concern, but the only reply was the haunting silence that hung over the airwaves, broken only by the distant echoes of gunfire. Robertson, Cillian's desperation, grew as the sounds of battle intensified in the distance, followed by an ominous silence. Jesus, I'm on my own. Taking a deep breath to steady himself, Cillian assessed the situation at hand. Okay, that gunfire was a few blocks away, he reasoned, his mind racing with possibilities. So I have time to move. But there hasn't been a big boom yet, so the truck is still there. With a grim determination, Cillian resolved to act swiftly. Okay, I have to get to the trucks and disable them, he muttered to himself, his jaw set with resolve. I can't risk survivors getting to them. Stepping out into the dimly lit alley behind the coffee shop, Cillian was met with a hail of bullets as they tore through the air, striking the metal door with a deafening clang. Frantically, he returned fire, his heart pounding in his chest as he stumbled back into the relative safety of the storeroom. Holy shit, they found me. Cillian cursed under his breath, his hands shaking as he struggled to maintain his composure. Cillian's pulse quickened as he darted towards the storefront, the sound of approaching footsteps echoing behind him, several sets drawing nearer by the moment. Reaching the door, he thrust it open and burst into the street beyond. The office building he had narrowly escaped loomed just a block and a half away. Knowing that making a beeline for the trucks would be futile, he scanned the area frantically for cover. Cillian made a split-second decision and headed towards the building infested with zombies. As he ran, he deftly retrieved his cell phone, setting the alarm for 30 seconds before tossing it aside. He sprinted towards the looming mob their menacing forms coming into view. Just as he neared the approaching mob, Cillian swiftly veered down the side street adjacent to the building, hoping to evade their notice. A few of the creatures turned towards him, shambling in pursuit. Undeterred, Cillian pressed on, his legs pumping as he raced towards the far side of the building. With each stride, he pushed himself harder, the urgency of escape lending strength to his limbs. When he reached the midpoint of the block, the shrill wail of the alarm pierced the air behind him, 
signaling the countdown's end. Moments later, the staccato rhythm of gunshots erupted, echoing through the street as chaos ensued. As the alarm blared behind him, Zillion pushed himself to keep moving, knowing that every second counted. Just keep them busy for a few minutes, he muttered, his breath coming in ragged gasps. That's all I need. Zillion's feet pounded against the pavement as he raced around the building, his heart thundering in his chest. He paid no heed to the few zombies stumbling in his path, their outstretched hands grasping at empty air as he flew past them with reckless abandon. Emerging on the street facing the river, Cillian was met with a horrific scene. Flaming debris littered the road, the fire raging unchecked in the building above. Ahead, several zombies shuffled towards the cacophony of gunfire echoing through the air. Jesus, are they going to wipe out that entire mob? Cillian muttered to himself. He pushed his fear aside and bolted forward, banking on the gunfire to divert the zombies' attention. Nearing the building's edge, a formidable mass of creatures still stood between him and the shooters. Cillian dashed across the street with all his might, his steps drowned out by the relentless barrage of bullets echoing from afar. Undeterred, he pressed on drawing nearer to the trucks visible a couple of blocks away. Yet, as he approached, he hugged the shadows of the buildings, detecting movement ahead. Two figures loomed beside the trucks, one slumped against the wheel well, clutching his chest while the other remained vigilant scanning the surroundings. How the hell do I get them away from the trucks? He muttered, his mind racing for a solution. An idea sparked in Cillian's mind as he glanced down at his watch, the wind-up alarm clock ticking away the seconds. If nothing else, I have timing, he thought with a wry smile. Sure enough, as the alarm blared to life, the two men by the truck sprang into action, rushing towards the gas station and attempting to silence the intrusive sound. Seizing the opportunity, Cillian darted out from the shadows, his knife gleaming in the dim light. With urgency, he slashed through the tires of the trucks, ensuring that even if the men managed to survive the explosion, their escape would be hindered. As the last tire fell victim to his blade, Cillian's ears pricked up at the sudden silence of the gunfire near the office building, replaced by the distant sound of shots echoing from the gas station. Cillian's mind raced as he calculated his next move. The urgency to return to the bridge pulsed through him, but the looming threat of the militia closing in from the office building forced him to reconsider his route. Ultimately, he opted to veer towards the river. Bounding through an exposed stretch of land, Cillian darted past a row of buildings, relieved to find them devoid of any signs of life. Halting at the corner of one structure, he stole a glance backward, scanning the desolate street for any hint of pursuit. His gaze then shifted to the block beyond, where the ground plummeted down to meet the tranquil embrace of the water below. I should be able to follow that to the bridge and get across. Cillian murmured to himself, his gaze fixed on the river's edge. I'd rather not swim if I can help it. As the distant footsteps drew nearer, Cillian instinctively pressed himself into the shadows, watching with bated breath as three militiamen dashed past him towards the gas station, their weapons at the ready, the relentless alarm still piercing the night air. Not wasting a moment, Cillian bolted from cover and sprinted towards the bridge, his senses heightened with adrenaline. Staying close to the edge, he remained vigilant, prepared to slide down the embankment to the safety of the water below, if necessary. Reaching the bridge, Cillian took a cautious pause, scanning his surroundings for any signs of danger. To his relief, most of the creatures that had once plagued the bridge had been drawn towards the blazing inferno at the office building. He could see the mob outside the building, Amazed to see only a handful of zombies still standing. Damn, they did a number on those things. Cillian muttered to himself, noting the relative calm that now enveloped the area. I guess they figured they were going to be here for a while and didn't want to be bothered. Moving cautiously along the bridge, Cillian used the side barrier for cover, his senses on high alert. Suddenly, a deafening explosion rocked the night, sending shockwaves through the air and shattering windows in its wake. Taking cover behind the concrete barrier, Cillian spared a glance back towards the gas station, where a towering fireball illuminated the sky. Looks like someone decided to open it up, he observed grimly, his voice tinged with bitterness. That's what you get for being thieving bastards. Continuing across the bridge, Cillian deftly avoided the remaining zombies, his path clear as he made his way towards his bike. Mounting the vehicle, he took a moment to gather his thoughts. What a waste. 
Cillian mused, shaking his head in dismay. There's so much death and destruction, all for nothing. With a heavy heart, he started the bike, letting it idle for a moment as he glanced towards the eastern horizon, where the first light of dawn began to creep over the landscape. By the time that sets tonight, this whole mess is going to be over. He reflected somberly, his voice barely above a whisper. I just have to hope I'm still on the right side of the ground when that happens. With a determined rev of the engine, Cillian hit the throttle, the bike roaring to life as he raced down the highway, his eyes set on reuniting with Sergeant Alvarez and Private Acosta before the day was done. The end.